Okay. All right, Mr. Durbin, let's do this. My name is Willie, and I am a CODA. In my case, CODA stands for a child of deaf adults, plural, as both of my parents were deaf. You could also call me a BODA, as I have two brothers that are also deaf. Recently, CODAs have gained attention due to the Best Picture Oscar-winning movie of the same name, and I'll comment on that later. There were six children in our family. The three older children were all hearing, while out of the three youngest, I was sandwiched between my two deaf brothers. By the time I was 12 years old, I was the only hearing individual in a family of five. And this was a time before telecommunication devices for the deaf, television captioning, teaching babies to sign, and smartphone texting. To present a topic on CODAs is to take a close look at their parents. The experiences they encountered growing up, my father contracted spinal meningitis at a young age, my mother whooping cough. They came from hearing families. I'm gonna showcase four stories about myself and my parents and how it shaped me, a CODA, into the person that I am today. Imagine at the age of four or five not being able to communicate with your family, been given a packed suitcase, a note pinned to your jacket, and placed on a train by yourself. This experience happened for both of my parents as they were sent off to the North Dakota School for the Deaf. My parents grew up to be very strong, independent individuals and passed that trait on to their children. When I was six, I first attended public school. I went around on orientation day introducing myself and my father to teachers. I can still remember the principal stating, oh, your father is deaf and dumb. I don't remember what I said next, but I do remember exploding with rage as I fiercely read him the riot act that my father was not dumb. At the age of 10, my father brought me along to buy a car. My father was a very smart man and did his research on new car prices. When the salesman quoted a price that was significantly higher, it was I that translated to a stunned old man every nasty comment my father said regarding him, trying to take advantage of a hardworking deaf individual. When I was 12, my grandmother died. As the only hearing person in the home, it was I who answered the phone call as TDDs and relay services was not an option. It was I who then told, had to tell my mother that her mother had passed away. It is these emotions, these experiences, these stories that stay with me many decades later. Growing up in the 70s and 80s, television was a big thing for families. In our house, we watched shows that were action-packed, such as the Dukes of Hazard, Chips, Emergency 51, physical comedy from John Ritter, Carol Burnett, Tim Conway, Dick Van Dyke, and of course, Red Skelton, Charlie Chaplin, and Laurel and Hardy. What we didn't watch were the most popular shows of that era, such as Marcus Welby, MD, and MASH. The witty banter in the operating room with everyone wearing masks had zero consideration for the deaf audience. And all of this was before the widespread proliferation of television captioning. Okay, so let me switch gears and answer the top five questions I get as a coda. Number five, do deaf people enjoy music? The answer is yes. Vibrations in music is known to certain trigger endorphins and elicit emotions the same way for hearing individuals. Check out videos and showing interpreters uh, translating for rappers such as Eminem and Wiz Khalifa. My mother's favorite singer, Ethel Merman. Imagine listening to that all the time as a kid. Number four, your parents were deaf. How did you learn how to talk? Well, I had three older siblings that helped me with my auditory skills when I was little, that and Saturday morning cartoons. Codas like myself learn to mimic sounds in their surroundings, which is probably why I have at least a dozen different voices when I'm on stage acting, or unfortunately, when I'm singing. Number three, do you know any swear words? Or the equally interesting, is this a swear word? My answer is that I was never taught swear words by my parents, were you? Each family had their own slang for insults. I know that we did. I would joke that if I, was, if I swore, I would have to wash my hands out with a bar of soap. <laughs> Number two, it must have been very quiet in your house growing up. No. Deaf people have little concept about how much noise they're making around the house, washing clothes late at night, vacuuming early in the morning, slamming of doors, basic everyday noises amplified. Most common are the pounding of hands on the table and the stamping of feet just to get someone's attention. And the number one question, do you know sign language? My answer consisted of explaining that without sign I would have starved. Words like eat, drink, and more kept me fed. Today, almost every baby is taught sign, and for me, it progressed into my teens with when is dinner? My room is clean. Can I have some money? And where are the keys to the car? <laughs> the codas that I know, the ones that I grew up are out, 
are outgoing and outspoken. They command some sort of attention. They are comfortable in front of an audience. They are teachers and police officers. They work in public relations and customer service. They're actors and presenters. Coders learn to observe behaviors, not just verbal indicators, but the whole physical presence. I have always been comfortable acting on stage in various roles, not with just my voice, but with my facial expressions and my body movements. I grew up observing my father's ability to pantomime. Being a CODA has helped me to be comfortable presenting in front of hundreds of attendees, and it gave me the skills I needed to be a leader in my career. It has allowed me, encouraged me to take risks, to be bold, to be uncomfortable, to get on stage with a guitar and sing despite growing up in a home surrounded by silence and deafness. If I hit a particularly bad note, I would simply state that I got my singing talents from my mother and, of course, Ethel Merman. Now, in the movie Coda, as I said, I was going to get back to that. While happy that this won an award, many scenes just didn't feel right. The doctor's office and the town hall shouldn't happen due to the introduction of the ADA in 1990, which entitled the deaf the access to the same services provided the hearing community. As for the scene where she heard her parents having sex, I will neither confirm nor deny that has ever happened to me. The movie I encourage you to watch is The Sound of Metal, a story about a drummer that loses his hearing and is introduced to a deaf community. This story touches on topics such as moments of stillness and rejection of technology such as cochlear implants. This movie hit home on a number of deaf issues and I highly encourage you to watch it. This is my mother at the age of 90 at her birthday party with all of her sons who are successful in their own way. A couple of us have been married for over 35 years. Seated on both sides of her are my brothers who are also strong, independent, deaf individuals, just like my parents. This is what made me who I am today. My name is Willie, and I am proud to be a Coda. Thank you. <laughs>